and then I, is on. Oh, sorry. Um, I I don't I don't watch sports, but um, my Fire TV continues to tell me that it could wa help me watch sports. So um, I don't know if that's helpful or not. Yeah, Chris. For some reason we have camera problems today, but here we are. That was a cool camera problem too. It's yeah. not like a run of the mill. That was an internet it's weird gremlins, too, cause gremlins I'm, problem. I was just on another uh, Jitsi call like two minutes ago in the same browser and the camera worked fine. And then I try and join here and suddenly I'm like, my camera doesn't. And I, I not only that, but I have three cameras to choose from and none of them wanted to work. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Davis has joined us. Excellent. But before we get too much started, Jerry, I, I have a almost off. Uh, Jerry, um, there's a channel on Mattermost called uh, Since Doing, and I'm going to suggest that as one of the channels where the OGM conversation might go. Yeah. Good. Um, that makes sense. And I was going to ask if we might collaborate on thinking through um, Since Doing, OGM Since Doing, which I... Cool. So... Hasn't had any activity in a while, but might actually make a lot of sense. <clears throat> um, and and Bentley made an interesting comment, which was maybe a channel, maybe a mailing list, whatever. I I I think it would actually be good to make a mailing list too. Um, we've kind of <laughs> don't make me make another mailing list. You've been trying to wean me off of this, the one we've got for years. Uh, has it worked? Weaning hasn't worked, and I haven't been able to get Ken Homer basically over onto Mattermost, which would the, which would cut the traffic in half. The, the, the way to do it is uh, a quick shot to the head. That's <laughs> an easy fix. <clears throat> so, so for people who are not tracking the OGM mailing list, uh, it is kind of seething and burbling in, in, in good and difficult ways in the sense of we have some very interesting conversations going on about what media is reliable? How do we collaborate? Is open global mind actually either open or global or a shared mind? Or is it really like a closed lefty mind? Is that what we've sort of devolved into? And closed, closed lefty non-mind. Closed lefty neuron. Um, is, is that what we really are? Or are we just like a coffee clutch? Uh, or could we organize ourselves and do some do, get some shit done? I think in ways that we've been talking about with Agora and everything else here. And I have a funny feeling that we could sort of marshal some resources to do some really interesting things because the crowd is now kind of ready to, to do something. And if we like find the right rails to ride on and throw this little puppy in gear, um, we could make a little progress, which, which is exciting, but a little nerve wracking. Um, and, and sorry to continue. This is kind of on topic for fellowship. Yeah, really. yeah. Um, my <clears throat> the observation I have is that OGM currently is getting a bunch of stuff done. It's just not under the OGM brand, really. Um, so the converse problem is it's easy to think OGM is an organization. It's it's not. It's this fuzzy boundary, you know, coffee it's coffee clutch actually. Um, and so a a path forward is to I I think the path forward is to make projects. <clears throat> that have governance, that have membership, that have goals and Kanban boards, and and not conflate that with OGM. Um, and then there's the ageless question, which remains unanswered, uh, which is how many OGMs are, are actually are there, right, Pete? Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of the state of this, the the state of affairs at this juncture, um, and I don't know if that interests everybody else, but but it feels to me. I'll add one thing to it, which is we had one in OGM, we had one hoedown call, which is just a name I borrowed to say, hey, everybody, bring your tools. Let's pick one topic and let's each represent that topic in our favorite tool. And then let's take the latter third of the call and share on screen what we how we note took using the tool. And I have a funny feeling in retrospect, and this is one of those 2020 magical hindsight moments that we probably should have done one of those every month since. Um, and we might actually have gotten somewhere and made some general progress. And, and there might be actually be much more of a practice now of using our tools to make sense of things, which we don't actually do very much. I'm, I'm always doing it on my own. 
uh, at just as uh, Flancian, you're doing it on any call you're on using Agora, um, but but it's not a practice in the community at all. Um, Cafe Clutch, yes, yes. So many fun German words, except for the ones that mean extermination, but still. <laughs> not as fun as Schlan Weipus Gwingeth Go Gate of Quindrabo Schlan Decilio Go Go Golf, but you know, fun nonetheless. Nice work. Is that I, I don't know that one. That is the longest place name in Europe. <laughs> and it's a, it's, a, it's a glacier in Iceland or something? No, it's a, uh, a small town in Northwest Wales on the Isle of Anglesey. Oh, Wales. Yeah, yeah. I remember driving through Wales once and turning on the radio and going, what the hell is this language? Like, there isn't a, there isn't a recognizable syllable among them. Yeah, so, and somehow Peter just knows how to spell it. Of course. Well, like, somehow you he, know how to pronounce it. Longest yes. longest <laughs> place name, I think, is an easy Google, right? And he he he, he even got the four L's in a row. <laughs> <laughs> Some people did. just write three, but it's four. Um, so it's in uh, my brain, of course. So I'm connecting it, it to that. It looks like um, the Ryan Reynolds and whoever the other guy is uh, show about buying <laughs> the um, football team. Yeah. Yeah. They have a, a funny little promo where it's the two guys and then a translator, a Welsh-speaking translator, and she goes <laughs> off-road. Um, pretty soon you can say, you know, the, the two guys are, like, being cute with each other, and she's like, these assholes, <laughs> you know, they don't know what they're talking about, or they're just idiots or, in Welsh, you know. And so Welsh is a fun language to listen to because you have no idea what it what. <clears throat> Every language is tough until you know how to speak it. That's um, like oh, deep, uh, not to get us off track. Oh, not that we were um, heading off track. I, I, and I, this will probably help. <laughs> this will help Flancy and I. So I'm I'm going to take us back onto the topic. No um, way. That that we were on. Um, Grab the so nose rings in my and experience, In my experience with communities, the best model that I've seen uh, thus far for kind of these distributed both real-time and uh, asynchronous communications is to throw email overboard because I really, in my experience, no one has ever accomplished anything in a group on a long email thread. And trying to keep up with the email threads is impossible. Searching and finding those email threads for the useful data you want is even worse. So what I have seen that's worked reasonably well is a, a public wiki that's reasonably easy to edit combined with a real-time chat that is also searchable. And even if the wiki is not super easy to edit for everyone, the things and fun things that happen in the real-time chat are are or could be aggregated with your wiki to move the most salient, useful pieces. You have a chat for 20 minutes, you figure something out, and you document that in the wiki. And then everyone reads that. And then maybe if you want, you take a weekly newsletter, here's all the new stuff that happened in the wiki, and send that as the one email. But then, mm -hmm. you know, make yes. everyone go back to the chat in the wiki as this is where the conversation happens, not in that email. Um, and that makes it a whole lot easier to like get the snowball ro rolling down the hill. So I, I like your approach a lot. And I think we have the tools already sort of installed to do what you just said. And I, it's, I, I think what you just said is really clarifying because one of my pet peeves in life online is e a private email threads that go on forever and <clears throat> don't resolve and just go every which way and are very hard to harvest. And I often harvest really good posts on long email threads and put them in my brain just to have them someplace where I can refer to them afterward, right? Um, so we have Mattermost, which is a medium functioning, very nice chat client that everybody's like sort of accustomed to and we could get everybody to move over to. We could quell, we could quench this conversation on the Google group, I think, and say, hey, all traffic on this now moves over to this Mattermost channel, the one that, that Pete suggested at the top of this call, which is called Sense Doing. Uh, so we can just use a channel that's been idle for a while for this project purpose, which makes a lot of sense to me. And then Pete has Massive Wiki, which is a moderately easy to use wiki that we could actually pour lots and lots and lots of interesting info into. 
um, and use as the basis for the, whatever nuggets come out of this that are shiny and bright and we want to publish in some sense. Um, so I'm, I like all of that. And I'm um, unless Pete is going to shoot it down, I, I feel like there's a plan formulating. Pete, thoughts? Um, I, I want to thank Chris for encapsulating that pattern. I, that's, you know, that's a time tested and we've seen that su successful time and time again. Um, the, the little caveats are that um, the, the people who are doing the wiki stuff have to be kind of on their game and doing yeah. decent information curation. And then the little bit larger pattern that you're saying where there's a, a, a bit of a feedback cycle with, uh, you know, maybe a, a weekly email or something like that. Um, it's it's also kind of important, and it's also important just for people to be good uh, chat participants. Um, it it sounds funny. It maybe it doesn't actually sound funny in this day and age. Uh, my uh, my my 2000 or you know 1990 whatever self would think it was amazingly funny that people don't even know how to use chat, but they don't. Um, so there's a little bit of handholding just to and and you know um, shepherding to to get people to do chat well you know it's um, but but yeah overall I I totally agree that the other we we could talk also a, a lot probably about massive wiki and its usability I think it's actually kind of the best wiki but um, and I'm glad you think that that makes sense. And I think it's as yet an incomplete wiki because it doesn't it have a wiki front end to add it as a wiki. Yeah. Does. does anybody want so, to know if there's a score in the in the France Morocco game? Yes, I actually I have no. It's, I don't care at all, but because you care, I really want to know. And yeah. is, this, is this going to spoil anybody's day if I mention that France scored a goal already, like four minutes in? Uh, I'm not surprised. Yeah, five minutes in, Theo Hernandez scored. No, no, no. That's all I yeah, know. That's likely, yeah. So, so I had a, a question and, uh, and and a few comments Please. Mind, on this topic. So first, like, uh, uh, so I'm 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 enamored of the uh, with the concept of like a, a, a resolution route or source of truth, right? So I guess the, the before we go into the you know uh, I think we discussed this a few times, but it's still unclear. You know, uh, for example, like where will the will we where will the there be like one page where we have like you know. The Mattermost link and the Massive Wiki link, including Wiki proper, and uh, and in this uh, and, the, uh, and before uh, the is there a shared calendar or like any kind of like tracker we have for like all the different projects uh, associated with OGM or this group or both? So a couple answers. Uh, one, uh, Pete created a, a calendar page on one of the massive wikis. So there is a, a page that says, hey, here's a bunch of standing calls we have every week and, and a bit of a standing calendar. We haven't successfully used GCAL to sort of catalog and, and, and mess around with a lot of our calls well. Um, <clears throat> if, we put a, if we put a project named page on a massive wiki right now and then make that the header, uh, a link on the sense doing channel on Mattermost, then we have one canonical place where start, please start here. <clears throat> and we can put other links and links to whatever else comes out of it and a link, you know, list to any calls that come out of this and all that can attach there. That's cool. easy, that's easy to do. Yeah, that seems like a, if I if I if I could get like, a, sorry, I don't want to like just request it, but you know, if I think we could get one URL where it's like, this is the one you go to, and the one you edit, if you want to add like a new resource, that also forces people to say like, to get access to that. And you know, it has this uh, cascading effect maybe. So thank you for that. Uh, I guess I have a side question, which is like, we have like also like a fellowship of the link uh, channel, uh, but we are saying like, we're gonna consolidate on sense doing. So sense doing, because this is sort of an OGM and its communities project, I think it makes sense to go over into a, a, a free channel, not the Fellowship of the Link channel. Because um, this is more of the quiet Fellowship of the Link conversation uh, that we hold there. We're not saying I, much. I, a, a different way to say that is, even though Jerry and I and folks are are talking about this specific thing, it's actually not, I, we're, I don't, I'm not suggesting, I don't think Jerry is suggesting that it's actually a Fellowship of the Link topic even though we're kind of taking over the call a little bit. No, okay, makes sense. No, I, I, it seems related, so I'm, yeah. Since well, it's, it's also actually, I, the, the amount of um, 
the amount of interest that like kind of exploded was really amazing. We got people who haven't been participating ever or for years say, oh, I'm interested in Lurkers that. Lurkers are uncloaking. Here's how it would, would uh, po possibly connect to a community that <laughs> I'm part of, you know, so right away nice. it was really exciting and really, really interesting. Cool, cool. So, um, so to push that conversation forward a tiny bit, um, one of the questions is, okay, so what should we focus on? I, I think an interesting question is what do we call this new project right now? So Pete, if you want to stew on that or if we want to brainstorm on that uh, in the chat, that would be great. The second thing is, what do we want to focus on? And there's an active conversation about COVID and its complexities. I'm a big fan of um, uh, like an appreciative inquiry approach of, hey, what would a really great national approach toward an, a pandemic like COVID look like? To go hmm. let, to push all the blame and crap out of the out of the way a little bit, not ignoring it entirely, but saying, hey, it would have been great had we done this, and then to let different participants you know, uh, uh, explain that. Um, another alternative is, and I wanted to bring that into this call because I mentioned it, I think, on uh, Free Jerry's Brain uh, to Monday. Um, Paul Roney of Cosmic is extremely interested in a project about sort of the history of computing and the visions like uh, Van Iver Bush's Memex and JCR Licklighter's document and Ted Nelson and Doug Engelbart and unfortunately mostly white men who created these central essential documents that we fed off of for years and years and built out the Windows interface that we're talking through right now and a bunch of other things. And he wants to maybe appropriate or adapt the podcast that I've been doing for Betaworks on tools for thinking and shift that. And that's kind of exciting for me because I'd like to stay involved. And I'm, I'm trying to think of what would that podcast look like as part of a larger effort that does more things, that involves more people. Um, and we could pick as a topic, as a seed topic, the history of computing and these sort of documents and go and step completely away from COVID and its controversies and go into areas where, Chris, I think, I think you know, I, I really love your approach toward uh, computer history and how all these things fit. I think it would be really fun for you to play in that. And then we could basically seed this new territory um, uh, of wiki slash other sorts of tools and bringing together Idea Loom, which is Marc-Antoine Parent's tool, uh, Society Library, which is Jamie Joyce's platform and others, and Agora, which is you, Flancian, me and my brain, and whoever else wants to sort of come in and say, we'd love to be peers in this party as well. And then we figure out on the wiki how to say, hey, here are the large parties playing or the you know, and, and then here's everybody else who wants to help and, and participate. But I can I can see that playing out also. Oh, so much to follow up on that. So so much. There, so there, there's two other things I'll ma mention on the uh, communications part, and I presume it should be pretty easy to disable the chat in Jitsi so that we don't use that, which then forces that data into the etherpad or the the other thing we're using that can then be archived somewhere so we actually have we can keep it all because so otherwise have you some seen, of it just goes into the have you seen doc drop from hypothesis yes and i don't know if jitsi works nicely with it but for any youtube video and i've, I've been uploading these calls to youtube but for any youtube video it synchronizes the youtube generated transcript with the video and does really nice stuff. I think that's a starting point yeah. for that's sharing cool. out all the conversations related to this topic. Well, we're, we've got Flancian's kind of shared pad, which is useful for real time things like this, um, rather than using like Jitsi chat. And it may take some heavy programming work to like build the one into the other. So if I could get rid of Jitsi chat and just have that in here, that would be even um, better. I, I, I will be happy to look into that because um, so Jitsi is actually iterated into our very flimsily, but uh, it is. And in general, I'm interested in cross posting every chat to every chat in general. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I will be happy to. And I think this is where going back to the wiki, I mean, um, if, if we can uh, get a start on like a task list. Uh, because I'm also like a, a very scatter personally, <laughs> and like uh, once I know that anybody, someone else is interested in something, I'm more motivated to actually like focus for longer periods of time. Uh, so that will We're help. Counting on that energy right there. Yes, uh, and to some extent, you know, like a backtracker could be uh, for like actual development the right format, but just a wiki with like priorities. Uh, I think I will be happy to, to start with that. Uh, just a quick note uh, on the fact that you know uh, we do have like a Nagarabot. 
uh, that currently works on, of course, Amazon, uh, but also a matrix with this chat. And adapting the code, uh, what it does, uh, uh, Peter, in uh, case you're interested also for Massive Wiki, it just dumps to, uh, to disk, to a Marlon file. Uh, whenever you use like Wikilinks or a hashtag, it maps a copy of the message, optionally and so on, uh, and a link to the original anchor, so you can jump to chat, uh, to every one of the entities you mentioned. So that could be easily, and it's designed to be detached from the in our, it's in our bridge. So it could be easily reused in any wiki system uh, or like to some extent, uh, yes. Pete? It's JavaScript or? Python. Yes. Um, separately, uh, I have a an API call where you can give it a Zoom chat file, and it will give you back each message broken up and, and individual links and who sent it and things like that. So Vincent uh, Arena is using that for, uh, for Catalyst, um, where he ha takes an event. We, you know, we take the chat file, and then he, I, I disassemble it for him and give it back to him in messages. And then he's mm -hmm. got ways to filter by sender you know, show all the links, archive all the links, things like that. Yeah, he, here's where like uh, the, the, this, uh, going back to the meta that, you know, like you propose, uh, Jerry, on the history of tools for thinking, uh, you know, Zoom, Bitsy, they are tools for thinking, right? Uh, I think they're in scope, uh, the way I see them uh, currently. And perhaps uh, using this map to sort of like model what is in scope for iteration, uh, and cross-posting, for example, which we, will be my default approach, that will be a super interesting project to me. It's sort of like what I set out to try to do with uh, as, as an experiment, right, and clumsily with the Iowa. Uh, and then, you know, we could ideally, like, uh, share share this, uh, you know, this API call, for example, like, do, like, solve, like, Zoom interrupt. That sounds very interesting. So I'm, um, I don't edit much in Hedgedoc because I get confused by up, down, whatever, and I post a lot in these chats. And then we, so I, and when I'm in Zoom, I always <clears throat> save the chat and share it back into the Mattermost channel and save it myself and blah, blah, blah. When I'm using Jitsi, I never save the chat and worry about the chat because I just kind of lose track of all these things. And I find that Hedgedoc relative to uh, Massive Wiki and Markdown files confuses me a bit because I just never know if anything actually got put there. So if we can kind of smooth over those edges and make it work, I'm better. Um, we tried hard for a while back in OGM to make people use the Mattermost chat instead of the Zoom chat, and that just was a fail. We, we just it was too hard to marshal people over unless you can actually swap the interface for the other the other thing whether it's Hedgedoc yeah. or, or Mattermost Chat or whatever, it just doesn't work. The cool thing, though, about Jitsi, and this is what I don't know, but there's Big Blue Button, there's Weebly or whatever it's called. There's like a whole bunch of these WebRTC assembled video chat mm -hmm. whatevers, one of which has got to let us plug in some other chat and still Absolutely. be open, but I don't know. Is Big Blue Button yeah. open enough to do that? It's interesting. I think, uh, yeah, I mean, we, uh, we, we should look into that. My hunch is that it will be easier to do the cross-posting, probably, because it will be a matter of joining a participant and then grabbing the events. Yep. Uh, but that's just like a, my my hunch. Uh, it, it, as an anecdote, uh, yesterday I was involved in a five-hour incident response. Uh, for, like you know, like fifty people in like different channels, video call chats, and so on. Wow. All all getting paid <laughs> to do so, wow. and it was still hard to get the conversation on the same tracks. We end up having like three chats. And that happens, and no surprise even, like this happens uh, every week. Um, so it is it just, it is very hard whenever you find yourself like going against the um, the ergonomics, right? I think to some extent trying to say like, oh, don't do what's natural, just do the other thing, no. <laughs> so it, it, this is why I empathize with like the idea of like uh, replacing the chat. But uh, having said that, I think cross posting is probably the uh, lighter weight um, uh, way to implement that. I love that the whole world is talking about uh, decentralization, and we meet every week to talk about better centralizing things. It's yeah. awesome. Um, or interagent. I, I have to jump in a few minutes because my that with the holidays, I've got to go pick my daughter up from school early. Nice. But I had an interesting conversation last night with a friend of mine uh, from the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation, who has large 
bags of money he'd like to give away. Um, and one of, he, he's a little more into, he his portfolio is technology, but in particular, he comes out of academia and a lot of the stuff he works with is in academia and tangential spaces. One of the problems he'd like to solve is how does a research group or a lab have an online communication system they can use both internally as well as external communications, which I think broadly is a solvable problem with both the web and wikis and communication back and forth. And we've spoke a lot about both indie web and, you know, activity pub type things. Um, he can't write checks to individuals, but if we could create a group, and I think a lot of what his, the problem he stated for how do you get a lab, which is really what we are, we're a lab working on a problem. Um, if there's a group or an institution that he can write a check to, to pay people to solve and fix these problems, which is what we're doing anyway. So there kind of is we can we could put together a grant and make an application and he would fund it right um so, and you know pay some people for some of this heavy lift stuff that we're already doing anyway so on a very tiny scale we've got a piece of this because og a little kernel piece of ogm is a fiscal sponsee of lionsburg which is jordan sukut's nonprofit, which is a registered charity in all 50 states um, and some time ago we did wrote a little bit of code and I got some grant money that I basically um, funneled back to Pete and Bentley and I think Marc Antoine uh, for some some of the work they did on the open source trying to prototype basically the idea of how do we how do we declare tiles which are small uh, modules of code that, that are needed by one or more projects and how do we fund them in a, in a mechanism that could sort of catalyze this kind of activity if someone else were in charge of running the, 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 the system, it would probably be run much more efficiently than, than me. But we've sort of prototyped a little bit of this and we have some of the vessels or vehicles that could be enlisted to do that. And I'll open it up too. If you have a personal project you're working on, even that fits outside of this and would like an introduction to him for that type of funding. Um, he actually was here yesterday and today at the Kavali Foundation in LA. They come together with Welcome, uh, the Gates Foundation. There's about 10 massive funders in a group and they do a an annual meeting. And their goal is to help get high value individuals who want to fund science outlets to put money into scientific enterprises. Their first big um, win amongst this group was helping to get Zuckerberg and Chan together to be able to give their money away to science enterprise. Hmm. Um, so um, he's not only doing it individually on his own within the Sloan Foundation, but is working with other foundations to do things related to this as well. So he, he's even got a deeper pocket on the side. But the end goal of his efforts is science, open open uh, science funding or? His, and I, th I think I had put a link there to his Sloan page, but um, information technology, a lot of the stuff he does is in academia. How do we pay for and help encourage open source and open science is, is kind of his broad portfolio. But anything that you could imagine the Sloan Foundation might fund in science, technology, society, because they their portfolios go all over the place. His little niche is specifically kind of information technology, which is really what we're all doing here. So the question is putting together a proposal that has a clear statement of we're going to do X, Y, and Z with the goal of open sourcing it putting it out, apply for a grant, they'll fund it, we do the work. Uh, ideally, it benefits what we're doing here in a general sense, but then also has other benefits for spreading it out. So as an example, uh, one of the first things I remember he worked on was, and he, he came out of George Mason University, 
and was one of the original people who worked on Zotero. So it's that type of thing. But one of the first things he funded, uh, John Udell uh, mentioned a developer and said, you need to meet him. And then they ended up funding what is now called um, Library Carpentries, which is a group of librarians who can code and write code. And so they help each other build and write code and programs and technology related to libraries and library research and general science. So um, I, there's, we are not far from what they're funding. We just need to have an entity and an idea of give us money for this. Jerry, you're muted. Too many windows away. Um, I'm finding librarycarpentry.org, but also uh the carpentries which is carpentries.org do you know which of those it is your music Chris. they're both related um and i'm not sure why there was a branch between the two but ostensibly i think they're both a lot of the same type of stuff cool um thank you i, I wish i knew which one was the more canonical of the two but i have never spent the time to puzzle it out. The eternal problem with canonical references. <laughs> if we've got a we've got a number of, of projects that would be that that would be good to fund, you know. Uh, so Fellowship of the League, Mouse of Wiki, um, uh, maybe Catalyst, uh, maybe Flotilla, Society um, Library. Yeah, um, I we should uh, we should firm up either either OGM and or Lionsburg to to do that. Um, so we should get together a little um, a, like executive council um, and and then inter you know interface between a couple funding partners and the all the we know like ten you know that and I think one of the things that we've kind of I Jerry I, I think we've the tile definition thing um and uh Lionsburg has a slightly different name i think maybe it's tapestry well tapestry, maybe... tapestry is an alternate to the uh, mosaic that i was talking about but i don't maybe think it's, it's, I don't I'm, think... I'm thinking mosaic and tiles yeah. Yeah. yeah um so i we're a little bit stuck on you know i i, I think we don't have to do that work to to get funding flowing through um, so I would short circuit some of the mosaic uh, tile definition stuff and just kind of just apply, you know, have a have a, you know, an executive council kind of a, a funding council of six people or whatever um, who would um, talk to um, project leads um, and you know pick pick some projects, talk to the project leads, say here's the kind of thing that you need to write and then funnel it through that team that council to talk to funders could and we, we should just do that could we have a, a like a huge cylindrical star chamber with floating daises works for me yeah okay good I, except if you want uh chris well, you're muted again uh, go ahead Pete. Say he can even go if I know they have funded open collective initiatives as well as kind of the one of their lower bars of organization yeah. to get some get things done, which is also an option too. So sweet. The, the thing that we have in our communities, um, plural, is is like one level up from one project. We have we have a like a cluster of projects, and. It doesn't make a lot of sense for each each individual project to go through all the processes of thinking of how am I going to structure this? You know, what's the funding mechanism? Blah blah. blah. We should just kind of so it, it's almost like a mini Lionsburg or a grown up OGM. <laughs> um, we should just meet in the middle and get it done rather than talking about that we could get it done someday. I love it, um, Chris. You have to boogie shortly. Anything else you wanted to jump throw in? That that's, the, that's the big that's the big thing but that's and great. he's they're very serious about like this kind of thing and I, he and i what he does and how he does it and the way he thinks about the world is the way we think about the world so 
almost any crazy idea we come up with is going to be something that could fit into his wheelhouse of kind of project managing and funding. So, yeah. Cool. Um, as a side note, and I think I'm heading toward what Bentley's talking about, um, part of the energy in the OGM list is a, is heading toward a tool that Marc-Antoine Parent has been building for a long time called Idea Loom, which I don't know is ready for prime time because he's like, ah, I'm not sure. Um, but using Idea Loom to represent some argument of choice of whatever this community decides to focus on. And hyper knowledge is another another angle on his naming for his project. Uh, Bentley, correct me if I'm if I'm aiming in the wrong direction here. Um, other thoughts while Bentley is tapping something into the chat, I think. Um, so I'm, I feel like that was a really nice framing, Chris, you offered us a little earlier about, you know, let's, let's move off of here over there. Pete, you're, I think, pointing to the sense doing channel is perfect. Um, we need to name this sucker. Like, uh, what? I propose sense doing sense doing as the name of the, the, the project as well. Yeah. Um, as I, I looked back on the, the channel history, Jerry, I think you're the one who actually created that channel. So, um, so you, you are the person who knows best whether or not it's appropriate to kind of, um, hijack that name. I I'm think it is totally, totally appropriate to hijack that name. And I didn't remember that. So thank you. So, <laughs> so the other thing, my, my observation is it, it got so much, dif so much diversity of interest so fast that I, th I think it breaks up into two things. There are people who are interested in the practice of sense doing, and then there are the, the, um, the verticals, the content areas around which you might focus your sense doing COVID or, you know, whatever. So I, I think, I think already, what I would do is I would say there's there's a meta there's a sense doing guild right. meta, a meta thing right and then there are individual things and some people will be attracted to the meta thing and some people will be attracted to the the tactical thing I I only I'm interested in talking about the Black Lives Matter you know are you are you suggesting we have sub channels related to sense doing so sense doing dash COVID no, sense doing dash not not yet mystery? um Good. the the channel is fine. Um, but I, I would be explicit that because the, I, you, you don't want to, you don't want to say to, I, you know, um, so we're talking about COVID and then we lose the bunch of people who were talking about, you know, society library doing something completely different, or right. we're only talking about, you know, sense making as a general topic. And it's like, okay, well, I would talk about COVID, but I'm not interested in talking about sense doing. So how are you suggesting we manage that on the one channel? Um, it's not about the channel. It's about the project actually. Okay. Um, so to be, to be, um, uh, clear and coherent that there are actually two levels of participation or two levels of the project going on at the same time. Okay. And that some people are attracted to one level. Some people are attracted to another level. So basically just narrating that into the channel so that people have a sense of what, where, maybe even putting them in the header um into the channel into the wiki into yeah. the ogm mailing list and so we know, should where... create a sense doing project page on a massive wiki should that be the ogm wiki which seems sort of most natural to me as kind of a virtualish hub or somewhere else uh i like that except that the ogm wiki right now is is a really flabby and flaccid um uh wiki well we could tighten it right up with some push-ups and some sit-ups and some chin-ups i mean right. <laughs> it would be well to to yeah to go down that path i i think what i would do is is almost reboot it um start a fresh home page you know and there's three or four or five things on that one of them is the sense doing mm -hmm. and and one of them is the old wiki um which has got all the stuff that's that's there now. Okay. I, I would actually. That means rewriting the readme page, right? The readme page. 
um, and doing some information architecture, and I think also explicitly grabbing everything that's there and shoving it into the attic um, or into attic number one. You mean a full subdirectory? Yeah. Which is which is something you like to do, and I'm like, I, it should just be flatland. It should be just be wiki namespace. Well, there's, that's a whole other thing. Massive yeah, yeah. wiki has got the, the sin of. of it uh, is a sin. Directories, directories, yes. Exactly. It's like not the original so sin. You're, that you're was right. a whole different thing. You're, you're right. Well, so so that thinks that's a, an awesome uh, awesome observation. Um, so. So then the thing is to manage the people who have, who, who get um, hyper attracted to directorization, which is super easy to do in Obsidian, right? Um, uh, so Lionsburg Wiki um, had that in spades. Um, and is that Jonathan's sort of favorite? It's, it's Jonathan. And okay. Jonathan, you know, it's, it's an entirely natural and reasonable thing to do. And, it, and actually, I think it helped Jordan. But Jordan is the, the main author of most of the pages in the wiki. Right. Um, it's very useful having it organized in a, a file hierarchy, but then all of a sudden you're you're a slave to the file hierarchy. Yep. So I would say let's let's keep it flatland. Let's update it. Let's kill off some pages that are that are like like appendices yeah. appendages we don't want necessarily. Um, but I would say we can we can do a little CPR and a little extra, a little boot camp and be okay I, with I like the, with our DM wiki. Yeah. Go ahead. Can, can I interject here? And I, oh, sorry. No! You have of course you can. <laughs> Go ahead. Chris? Oh, no, I was going to say one thing that might help too. I noticed that in the Mattermost, some of the channels have um, prefixes, a channel header at the top that kind of explains what's going on mm -hmm. and or a link to a thing that's happening regularly. Yes. Adding that, I have some context now of what Sense doing is and could be about, but it having a header that says, Here's what we're talking about. This is what we're trying to do. And or go to this page for more details. So, becomes so if I share that link with somebody, it becomes a whole lot more self-explanatory. What we're doing, what's going on, type of as, thing. Um, yeah, sorry, my phone is ringing for some reason. As funds do. Uh, I, I have a, a question about this. Uh, I joined the channel and I didn't see uh, a lot of activity as of late. So I was wondering where the activity that you mentioned, uh, because I joined late today, where all this conversation about sense doing uh, took place? Um, mostly, uh, in, actually in two places. Um, the the active sense doing, and it doesn't have that name yet, except in this channel. I think it's the right name. Um, the active conversation is in the OGM list. Uh, there's mm. another proceeding, and that happened, started yesterday. Um, Monday, the day before, um, we had a, a very small conversation in a in a room about this size, and Bentley and Jerry and me were there uh, with the Free Jerry's Brain Group. So that's where kind of one of the the main impetuses started with uh, Marc Antoine's offer of using his Idealum tool uh, for the OGM list. And and so I I hope it doesn't twist things a little bit or bring in bad old memories. But if I if I say, hey, we did a hoedown way back when, we can sort of replicate part of that but make it all better by by starting with Idealum, but also um, uh, Grace had recommended using Society Library, which I was thinking about as well. So I'm going to like say yes, yes, and. And then Flancian, if you're interested in, in jumping in, then I'd be like, and, and our friend Flancian has this thing called Agora, which is a tool that will likewise really play nicely here and is probably easier to bridge to other things than most of our tools. Um, and we have, we, we're going to, we're going to basically use massive wiki as, as the core kernel and, and staging ground and, and, and launch point for this. And I'm, that, that sounds great to me. That sounds great. Yes. I mean, um, I am as, as usual, I am looking to like, uh, say like, I will be become very active this week because I've been saying that for a few weeks, but uh, we are going to the pro freeze. So I, I will try oh. to be there. And the holidays are coming up, which is going to mess up everybody's lives. So yeah. some of us will have more time. Some of us will have less time through the holidays. Mm -hmm. um, so what else can we do to make this succeed? What else, what else matters here that, um, I wanted to recall, I think it was Flancian who said calendar and 
you kind of want to also an issue tracker. Um, do you want a full blown issue tracker? I mean, like Jira or something, or what do you mean? <clears throat> uh, the best full blown issue tracker is Airtable. Oh, um, really? Oh. <laughs> well, thinking of like uh, something in GitLab, but yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, which which plant in? Uh, something in GitLab or you know some some issue tracker like uh, associated to, uh, to Git. Um, uh, but maybe yes. Uh, I'm fine with Airtable. I have never used it. Is it open source? Airtable is not open source, no. um, and it's multi-purpose. Um, I, I, it was a bit of a joke, um, oh, although, uh, for what it's worth, uh, the, the tools for thinking, tools for thinking map project, me and uh, Matthew and Bill, which is a sub of this. <laughs> Um, we have a beautiful issue tracker in Airtable. Um, it is beautiful because we all can manage uh, manage it. Um, uh, do you want to just duplicate that and we repurpose that into sense doing? Let's let's think about it more. I, let's not make a quick discussion, a uh, quick decision. Cool. Um, but but I think. <clears throat> Yeah, I, I, I kind of don't. It, it's not, it's not an open source tool. So yeah. maybe I don't know. And it costs money, depending how you, um, depending you can, how, depending you how you use it. Yeah, you can use it for free <clears throat> for the kind of stuff we're talking about. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe you, you know, maybe a thing to do is to to start with that. I what I was, you know, immediately is like, okay, let's defer that the choice of issue trackers, and then it's like. Okay, let's keep that as an issue somewhere. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. Wait, so, so, we, have so no we, issue tracker, we have no issue tracker to put it into that for. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, so then we have a wiki. We have a wiki. Uh, I think we can start. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think the, I, uh, that's a one way to do it. Yes. So one way to do it is to make a wiki page that says, you Which know, Pete was doing with massive issue tracker. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, I think I think a better pattern is actually to start with Airtable as your your first one. Um, uh, simplify the the TFT map project one a little bit. Start with Airtable, and then you know the one of the first issues is decide which issue tracker we really want to use. Mm. Yeah, that's and, nice and orderly. Um, the the reason to do it that way is because. Um, it, you know, a, a similar one is is pick Trello instead of uh, Airtable. Um, I I think that's the wrong choice nowadays. That used to be the right choice. But but anyway, if you start with real issue tracking, if if you start with uh, a wiki page, it, you get overwhelmed super fast. Mm -hmm. So if you have a real issue tracker, you've got enough um, uh, enough uh, bandwidth and and um, expressibility to actually manage stuff even as you're starting wiki pages get blown out super fast the secret is finding one that's usable enough for people who don't know how to write code or yeah. do git push git pull yeah i no. i i have to leave so i'll do yeah. that yes. okay, okay so thank you uh, I, I added to for the next agenda by default like uh define wiki or root url uh calendar url and issue tracker or project tracker. So you want to continue that thread. Yeah, I have where, experience. Where are like, those? Uh, so the default agenda in the finish of the link notes. Uh, which line? The hedge doc. Uh, now I have to find the hedge doc again. Yeah. Here they are. <laughs> and and uh, oh, just you. so we remember, uh, I do have uh, uh, an anecdotal ex recent experience with uh, social co with like uh, non technical users using just the default issue tracker in GitLab. Mm -hmm. uh, and it works just fine. Uh, yeah. And uh, if we are using Massive Wiki, which makes sense, uh, which is Git based, right? Uh, the, yeah. I mean, yeah. it, I mean, we will essentially, with any host, we will get like an issue tracker for free. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what do you think about Codeberg? Um, yeah. Uh, I haven't used Codeberg, but I like it in principle. It's not, yeah, Source Hat, I will stay away just because it's, me too. Uh, because, yes, it's just harder to use. Uh, Colbert, I think they're running a, a fork of Giti. Uh, yeah, and right yeah. now it's it's a transparent fork. It's actually exactly right. the same as Giti. Yeah, I, I run Giti for the Agora, um, and it's fine. Yes, GitLab is a bit more polished, I think, but I'm fine with either. 
Um, Git, Gitty, the codeberg is looking really nice, um, which, nice, by which I mean it looks a lot like Git, GitHub, unfortunately. Yeah, but, I'm fine. Um, I will be actually be happy to get some hands-on experience with it, yeah. Uh, yeah, the, their issue thing looks good. Um, so, yeah. So I, I like that. So yeah, I think it's a solid default. Although um, uh, OGM Wiki is on GitHub right now, so maybe actually we should use GitHub issues. Mm. Yeah, I mean we can set up a mirror. If not, I mean I up to you. Yes, I I have all my projects in GitHub uh, because uh, my employer requires it. So. Yeah. Um, uh, right now, our publishing uh, uh, CI, uh, our, our publishing continuous integration needs to be on one of the commercial providers. So right. we could go to GitLab, but I don't, I don't, I think I would stay on GitHub and then move to Codeberg. Well, you get the social network effects, which is what we want to dispel because yeah. uh, they are uh, enclosed in the commons. Yeah. 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 But, uh, but it's fair. Uh, just collaboration is easier. GitHub. Um, so use GitHub for the, the immediate term and, and hope to move to mm -hmm. Codeberg. Soon. I think that's fair. Yeah, I will yeah. be happy with that, yeah. Yeah, I love it. So, <laughs> I, so I like this. I fear that we're building like an onboarding ramp that gets pretty large for anybody who wants to ju actually jump in I, and, and, and help. I, I think the, well, so, I, I look forward to going back to Chris's recap of that. Um, the trick is the trick is not to present all of the complexity to program participants, project participants up front, right? right? You say, here's a chat channel. Yes, I'm sorry you have to learn how to use chat. After that, you're good. Don't worry about it. Um, you know, um, uh, magicians in the background, angels in the background will be making sure yeah. that the wiki is updated. You right. know? I guess, so it's, here's the chat channel, here's the, the homepage, here's the calendar, yeah. and that's all you need to start with. And yes. don't worry about anything else. Just participate with us in the chat. Yeah, channel. and you can say, if you want to get to level two, check out this page, and then yeah. you can pick behind a different curtain. Or you can say, just use wiki links in the chat and the and stuff will happen. Yeah. 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 Cool. So I'm um, excited about this. I'm always for like consolidating uh, in, in clear directions. Awesome. Um, Pete, do you want to create a page on OGM Wiki or shall I? For this as a, as a base jumping point for this project? Um, let's do it together. I don't okay. care who does it. Sounds great. I have a call right after this one. So. Um, sure. Not top of not um, top of this hour, but top of next hour, um, <clears throat> and um, and then we can take that page and put it at the top of the sense doing channel, and then I can write a note to the OGM list that yep. says a be alpha beta delta. Let's go. Yep. Cool. Nice. Um, I like. Um, Jerry, you and I should uh, catch up on the the new cool way to use uh, Git in Obsidian is the sidebar, not the hotkeys anymore. Ooh, yes, I'd like to catch up so I I can replace antiquated neural paths with modern neural paths, because we all know how easy changing neural paths is. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damn it. Um. Are there, um go ahead. I maybe let's uh, maybe let's look at. Um, do, you want, do you want to start a page now? in OGM Wiki? Well, the other the other thing to do real soon, I guess. Um, Fancy and what line number did you put our to dos? Oh, uh, it's in line number twelve in the agenda for next time. Gotcha. We have some in FOTL threads. There's different nodes, but uh, you can ignore that. Um, so create a wiki page, create a calendar. We, so we, we've got issue tracker. I, th I think I could take, I can make a wiki page. I can make a project tracker on GitHub. So is it, so here's the thing to think through. Is it okay if we're using the OGM issue tracker on GitHub rather than a specifically? 
I mean, I think that's uh, okay. from my point of view, I, I still don't get the difference between OGM and sense making. <laughs> and OGM, I like the idea of an open global mind. <laughs> so for what it's worth, that's fine. Fewer projects seems that's, easier to that's, do it. That's worth, um, it's worth talking through this a little bit, whether, yeah. um, This is a long, long conversation that Jerry and I have had over many, many meetings. Um, but not enough alcohol. I'm not surprised yeah. because you seem to have like a thousand projects, which yeah. I, I, I am like, I, I like an empathize. This is my, you know, aspiration over time. Um, so, and Jerry, this is a good example. Um, you know, so OGM Wiki, it makes sense to have the issue tracker for if, if sense doing is Part of OGM Wiki, then it makes sense to have the issue tracker be in the OGM Wiki repository, right? Along with anything else in the OGM Wiki, right? So if it were me, and I, I think this is probably the wrong thing to do. If it were me, I would start actually a new sense doing.